So in this video, I thought we would go ahead and trim up my bangs. Now, as you can see, my bangs with my curl pattern and the fact that they grew a little bit more in length have grown into my eyes. In my initial video, I go ahead and cut my bangs for the first time. And I went ahead and did them dry because a lot of people with curly hair cut their hair dry. However, because mine can go straight or be wavy depending on the time, in this video, I wanna try cutting my bangs wet. I also, previously, whenever my hair was all one length, if I leaned my head forward, no hair would come forward so I just had to choose where to start the point of my triangle, if you will, which if you haven't seen that video, it would make a lot more sense just to let you know. But it's the basic idea of not having any like long hairs like this come over and be in your way. We're gonna make sure that I can, you know, kind of evenly brush my bangs forward without getting of these little guys. All right, so I got my hair completely wet so we are ready to go ahead and try this. It'll look too long, but my hair will also shorten because of the curliness around the bangs. So what I wanna do is make sure that there is a definite area that the bangs start from. In, within this section, you can kind of see where that is on my head. I want to take a bit of that, add that in and create a little bit more of a definite line of where the bangs start so that whenever I'm brushing in the morning and brushing them forward, it's a little bit less chaotic. From this point, brush all of this back and that way we are ensuring that we are not taking for the bangs from the back of our head. Like we did last time, I want to first pull everything forward. And then I want to take my center piece so that that can be my initial guide. I like to have this middle piece as my initial guide because my bangs then go down and then have longer face framing pieces. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is such a look. So we use our fingers as a guide you can see that they come out at the same point, so they are equal on my face. We make sure that we're pulling it to the front, not side to side, and then point cut. Now the reason that we point cut instead of going in like this is because it will create more of a natural look in most scenarios with cutting hair, you want to cut up into the hair because it'll just feather it out really nicely. If you have straight hair, you still want to give yourself some extra length because once your hair dries, it will still probably go up a little bit. What I'm going to do now is take two little slits from the sides. I'm about to the end of our eyebrow and you can see because my bangs will come out at an angle, this line is at an angle. Now we don't want to cut like this because it'll make a super blunt end. So what we want to do is do this, let the hair release, and with the hair that hasn't released, we want to start and go across. With our first hairs. There we go. Awesome. One thing I discovered last time that I forgot this time is that depending which of your hands is dominant, do the harder side first because you'll have more control on the easier side. I did not do that this time, but I should have. All right, so I do my dominant hand still on this side and I just have to curve it really weird. So. hard to 
do on yourself. <laughs> you see how the curl pattern is making it different even though we did it completely even now that this part's trying to dry. Such a good look. I am going to section off another piece. Once again, we're coming at an angle. And I'm gonna come down. You can see the hair come up. All right, so let's see how this looks. It's pretty good tapered wise. All right, we're gonna pull down this side and just see if we need to do any minimal blending. Maybe just like ever so slightly. Cause it goes to that point, you see? So if we like do just like a itty, itty tiny bit, that'll make it not disjointed. There's definitely a point where your hair is too long and you can't like make it all blend, but I don't feel like my hair is quite to that point. I keep making it perfect on either side and then my curl pattern decides that it doesn't want to lay in that way. It's not really going to be that great anymore. <laughs> so first things first, my hair has dried and it's looking a little bit crazy. What I will say is that it trimmed up good. It is very even. It's definitely thicker, even though we didn't add a ton of hair to this middle portion, you can definitely tell. What I am thinking of doing is just thinning this out just a bit in this area so it's not quite so strong. As a not hairstylist, I have two ideas of how we could go ahead and thin these out. One is using that method of sliding the scissors along the hair, but instead doing it kind of up here just in a few different areas to thin it. The other is doing kind of a point cut and feathering out the bangs. Go to the next chunk over. Take a little bit from this chunk. I know if you're a hairdresser watching this, you are probably like cringing, but um, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't think it'll do the same thing for straight hair. That might actually be good enough without feathering. So here we are the next day. I'm also gonna consider maybe just a little bit on the sides feathering this out. I will say I get more compliments on these bangs than I ever thought possible, than I have had in any of my haircuts. How the heck do people fan curly hair? I'm quickly realizing that I do not think that I have the skill to be able to feather and fan out my own hair. Um, I can't seem to do it with the curls and if I make it wet, I like, take too much. And so I think that I'm gonna go back to my other method. This is what they look like after being washed and dried. This is kind of like their first day, most excited kind of look to them. So personally, I really like how these turned out. Definitely different than the dry hair cutting method that I did last time. 
What I will say is whenever I thinned them out, I made it a little bit more shaggy looking. So sometimes you can get almost like a, a mullet vibe from them, but they are curly bangs. So I guess I kind of could get that a little bit before. But that is one thing that I will say. I do prefer dry hair cutting even for like wavy hair and stuff. If you have similar hair to mine where sometimes it's a little bit flatter, I definitely would still recommend doing the dry hair cutting technique. And the only difference really that I would make is having your point of your triangle be a little bit more of a line. So you have about maybe an inch, I would say, of hair that goes straight across. And that's your point of your triangle before you actually start going out from there. That would be the only difference that I would make if you are going to also go ahead and make curly bangs. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit longer, but I wanted to give you all the information possible if this is something that you want to do or want to know more about. And so I just wanted to share my entire experience with you guys. I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye. Mwah.